The Economic Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, over the weekend, deleted an alleged fake report said on its Instagram handle claiming that the ex-minister of Petroleum, Desiani Alison Madwiki, admitted stealing $9 billion from government coffers and begging President Bola Tinubu for clemency to return to Nigeria. The alleged fake report was later pulled down after generating thousands of reactions. Now, the EFCC did not offer any explanation, no apology for sharing the fake report, but its spokesperson, Dele Oyewale, said he was not aware of the news shared on the agency's Instagram page, adding that whatever post not signed by him is not from the EFCC. This Alice Madwiki, uh, who is, of course, who was rather petroleum minister, minister between 2010 and 2015, under former President Goodluck Jonathan's government, is currently uh, facing trial in the United Kingdom over bribery allegations. Let's bring in political analyst and investment banker Namek Albieri uh, to, of course, discuss this. Good morning, Mr. Albieri, and uh, yeah. Merry Christmas to you. Same to you. Good morning. I've been talking lately about the demonization, you know, of um, Godwin Emefiele. Um, and, of course, you know, I, I, I described it earlier, you know, last week, that every government has its um, uh, scapegoat of corruption. Uh, the Good Luck Jonathan uh, administration had um, um, Deziadi Madweke and um, um, Sambo Dasuki, I believe, as the corruption scapegoats. You know, that eventually, of course, we, do, we just throw their names every now and then. And Godwin Emefiele seems to be the one that has been chosen for the Buari administration. Uh, but let's talk about the Deziani case and what the EFCC has done here. Um, what do you think happened with making the post and then deleting it? Um, basically, um, like you rightly pointed out, what the FCC will have done is to fish out the person that was handling um, their social media pages. If the post was done in error, of course, which is obvious it was done in error, the person should have been arrested and prosecuted for sharing fake news. And uh, like you rightly pointed out, this has always been the loss of the political class to sensationalize corruption without actually tackling it. You know, uh, I feel so much that one of the best creations of the Obasanjo government was the establishment of the EFCC. And I said it, any nation that must thrive must be able to tackle corruption. And tackling corruption is beyond news sensationalization or carrying fake news. Tackling corruption involved deterrence and doing, taking measures to ensure that things are done properly. And the, one of the things I've always said, the, the process of appointment or leadership of the FCC should be such that it should be very, very independent. Look at the United States, look at the FBI, which is the equivalent of the FCC. You discover that even when Donald Trump was the president, he was always having a running battle with the FBI chiefs for refusing to do his you know, intentions and all the rest of it. Many times he calls them out and all the rest of it, just because they were independent. And he cannot just wake up and fire the chief or interfere with the operations of that organization. Same suggestion we made for Nigeria. I've said it, even the criteria for the appointment of who has the organization must also be reviewed. Intelligence is one of the ways of fighting, in fact, the best way of fighting corruption. It mustn't be by way of brawl, propaganda, and the demonization of even the accused before even investigation is started. And I've said it, the laws, relevant laws should be amended. The law, the appointment of the EFC should follow this process. The board and the leadership of that organization should be done in such a way that the president will nominate six persons who are qualified. It must not be from the police or the army. Lawyers, senior lawyers, senior investment bankers, senior forensic authors should be opened up to occupy the headship of that organization. When the president nominates six persons from each of the regions of Nigeria, qualifying persons based on set criteria, the NJC should be involved in screening the nominated six. After the screening, one should be sent, the successful person should be sent to the National Assembly for screening approval or rejection. And once one of such persons has been appointed, it can only be removed through a two-third um, resolution of the National Assembly members, both the House Senate and the House of Rep. By making this such, it will be very difficult for anybody to manipulate 
the leadership and management of the EFCC. It will make them truly dependent. It will also enable them, shield them from the police of the day where politicians or those in power or who belong to one party or the other will try to gaslight one or two persons just to scorch your political points. I believe that is the best creation of the Obasanjo government, the establishment of the economic um, um, financial crimes, you know, EFCC. So I think they should take urgent steps to fish out whoever that posted such fake news in their social media handle. Of course, it's not, it's, it's not difficult to trace because somebody's handling it and make a scapegoat of that person. Yeah, but next time, no other person will try it. Yeah, I, I wanted to... Oh, sorry, Oliver. I, I wanted to, you know, once again point out, you know, that for me, one thing that you may also notice is how we just throw around figures to demonize people um, for the fun of it. I remember that in 2014, the same Desiane Allison was, you know, said to have stolen $90 billion. If you remember that story. And it went very, very, you know, viral, you know, that she had, she had carted away $90 billion of Nigeria's money. Nobody really cared to, you know, to ask, you know, how much $90 billion is. MFL is, pretty, is going through the same thing now. If you look at the uh, latest reports, the Obaze report, you know, on him, we just hear these very, very wild figures. And so do you, would you say that we're still dealing with social media trials um, instead of going through a proper process of investigation. Um, and um, I think the, um, uh, one of the northern state governors was also involved in this, in this whole mess. Um, but but what, what do you think, you, you know, about that? You know, is it still a social media trial? Is it still, you know, a, a, you know um, propaganda, you know, to blackmail you people in, in the opposition, you know, as it seems? You know, the political class is legated. You, you, you didn't even remember the full story. We were even told that the Zani bought a property that is worth $13 billion pounds yes. in, in a very special area in, in London. I remember that, I they, remember that very well. That they also tracked $200 billion of stolen funds by 55 politicians stashed away in Dubai. You know, all manner of, even Oshomole even told lies of how... Okonji Wala stole six billion naira and all the rest of them. You know, and let me tell you why they easily get away with this. They easily get away with this because they bank on the fact that over sixty percent of Nigerians are highly illiterate. When I mean illiterate, illiteracy is even beyond the inability to read and write. Illiteracy also goes to the level of not being able to interrogate questions, interrogate such sensational news, and then you know even independently you know, look at the possibility and feasibility of such happening. You know, it's so unfortunate. Till today, Sambo Dasuki had not been prosecuted. $2.1 billion have not been recovered. The Ziani had not even been allowed to come back to Nigeria to defend herself. I remember then she even made a move to come back and she was not allowed and she was blocked off. You know, okay, let us even look at what is happening with the Central Bank of Nigeria. You know, we've even left the meat of the matter and busy chasing shadow. For the Central Bank of Nigeria is has a, is supposed in quote and on paper to be independent. Governor of Central Bank of Nigeria is not it's just one person. We have a board of Central Bank. Remember, even when they hold NPCs, they vote for it. How come all those who played roles in the Central Bank, the board, nobody had been invited and nobody had been on the news? Even those who received those games with the former governor. It is on record that the government of the day, the Buhari government then, flagrantly, flagrantly disobeyed the laws of the land. The, the CBM printed by ways and means 22 trillion naira and handed over to the Buhari government. Till tomorrow, nobody has accounted for how that money was spent. Buhari had not been invited. The operatives of Buhari government have not been invited. Interestingly, you even saw some of the rumors that were carried in the sensationalizing of those reports, I said, ah, that even the, the, the printing of the new notes were done by an SA, a BAPA to the president. Even when the president of the day, Buhari, went to national TV several times to say clearly that he was the one that authorized the change of the Naira notes. You know, it's a very funny place to be in Nigeria. People thrive in rumors, propaganda, lies, and they use it as a tool of governance and manipulation because of the level of illiteracy in Nigeria. Over 60 percent, even those, some of those who parry PhDs in Nigeria, some of those who call themselves professors, some of those who believe to call themselves graduates, do not even have that capacity 
to interrogate, to just do simple search and all those stuff to find out if such news or such things are true. You know, it's so unfortunate that we have found ourselves in this way. Somebody printed 22 trillion. It's not as if you put it 22 trillion and took it to Abon or 22 trillion and took it to Bomosho. Printed 22 trillion and handed over to a very profligate government, a very corrupt government, one of the most monstrous and corrupt governments in Nigeria. See, today, the operatives of the Buhari government are busy prancing around. Nobody has invited them. In all the reports of the Obaze or whatever, none of, not, no, nobody mentioned what they did with that money. 22 trillion, which is against the whole extant laws of the land. That one we have, that is a low-hanging fruit of investigation to find out what that government and those who operated within that government did. So, no, Mr. Biari, I think the question now is how do we move past or move away from the demonization of people? And this is, of course, based on the pre presumption of innocence that the Constitution provides for every Nigerian citizen. There is a presumption of innocence. But what we see is social media trial is being done. And not just, you know, from the high class, even to those who are just innocent, maybe potentially innocent people just going about their day-to-day -day activities. Once they arrest a number of people, they'll the, they parade them as criminals, even when investigation has been done. How do we move away from this demonization, social media demonization? And how do we then enforce the presumption of innocence? Only there is so much lawless in this land. There is so much flag, uh, flagrant disobedience of even the basic laws. It, are you aware that in Nigeria there's a law that criminalizes um, um, spraying of Naira notes? Yes. In Nigeria, you go, to, you go to parties. Even the parties attended by those who are supposed to protect these laws. The money is the high and mighty. You open, go, just go to YouTube and Google. You will see people doing it, even spraying it, and nothing has happened. Nobody's being prosecuted. The law is just there for a fancy, and maybe to prosecute the lower criminals, those in the street. They want a three million multi-dimensional poor Nigerians. See, let me tell you, if we want to fight corruption, like I always said, corruption is at the root of the woes of Nigeria. Corruption is the major problem of this country. It is corruption that has made us to have a very warped and criminally minded electoral system, where even I make itself has become the center of criminality. If we want to fight corruption, it's very simple. We've made solutions. Like I said, the CCB and the and the EFCC must be truly independent. And the laws must be amended to show for to show how to make it so. And like I also said, the idea of public sector officials um, optionally declaring their assets it should not be so. This should be done publicly. We should create an e portal where every public sector official at all levels must declare their assets and liabilities openly so that Nigerians will have a record of what they own and what they owe. The ECB, the CCB actually also be amended. And the Whistleblowing Act fully enshrined in such a way that if anybody blows a whistle and a criminal is arrested, whatever is recovered, 20% of it should go to the group of people who have to blow that whistle. And number three, we should also include as part of the registration process, if you want to register a property, any asset, a house, a car, or whatever, there should be provision for us to include. People should include their name, their team, that is past education number, their name, and the BVN. And I will explain to you why. Over 2.6 trillion naira are stolen annually from our budgeting process at the national level. In the states, almost 40% of whatever is spent is actually criminally cleaved out by the politicians working with the civil servants. If you make this provision, you, somebody cannot use his brother, who is a panwine tapa in the village, to buy a property or a front. Because what it simply means that once you just fish out the tax and the official number of the person, fish out the BVN, fish out the, the, the name, you can easily find out from the person's historical performance, how, what the person does, and what turnover the person has done in terms of monetary numbers. You can easily find out. And then the law should be amended. But to involve financial crime, it should not be guilty until found innocent. It should be, the source only should be on the person who is being investigated to convince him the sure legitimacy of the source of fund. And of course, there should be massive reform in the securities like the police and all the rest of them. Just like we had in, 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 in one of these Oh, um, uh, orange countries in 2003, you know. I know these are things that can be done. But the question is, who will bear the cut? Do you expect Bezabob to cast out Bezabob? It's not possible. You know, all this institutionalism, and there, there's no intention anywhere by anybody to fight corruption. They will always look at the weak elements, 
they look like throwing the the the, the, the dog to the the, the, the the bone to the dogs and the very illiterate oppressed nigerians who will jump at it will lap, uh, lap on it we'll be discussing and they you know it is so unfortunate i sit down and i see this i look at this I say, to govern nigeria and face corruption is the easiest thing you fight corruption through the terrorists it's not as if the americans are less corrupt than nigerians it's not as if the Britishers are less corrupt what has made corruption less in those climes is the issue of deterrence they put laws in place Laws that will see there's no way in, in in America now. If I want to know who owns a property in one particular corner, I'll just tap the street, do the little search, and I will know who owns that property. And I can even trace the history of that property, how it moves from one person to the other. So if we can tackle this and the issue of dollar two, we should make criminalized use of dollar cash in Nigeria. You cannot use more than five thousand dollars cash. If you do it one one year imprisonment without option of fine. If we put in place this deterrence, these measures. Only if we will truly fight corruption. Nobody says sent in Nigeria. Agreed. But I can tell you, nobody says sent in America too. But laws are obeyed. Laws are enforced. Deterrence are put in place. When you put deterrence in place, and somebody knows if I steal, I will be caught. The, the teller in the banking industry who will be posting and doing the transfer from public fund to private accounts will easily know, oh, this man is stealing one billion. I'm the one that decided to post it. My MT has insulted me. Let me blow the whistle. His salary is 100,000 naira a month. And he knows if he blows that whistle and it works, he makes 200 million naira. So there will be nothing to hinder him. And if he blows that whistle, somebody stops him. That person takes it up. When a policeman arrests you for stealing one, 10 million naira, you, you can't give him 1 million and expect him to leave you. He will go all the work to prosecute you, knowing fully whether it's 20% coming to him. So when we put checks and balances in place, every Nigerian right. becomes an EFC agent. Every Nigerian a police officer, and you will see this country working. But the yeah. truth is, those who purport to, how did they even get to power? Across all the levels and arms of government. People that yeah. grab, took, ran, manip oh God, God help us. <laughs> well, God help us. <laughs> well, <laughs> Ola Luko, it is, uh, you know, uh, Chairman EFC is currently, so he does have a lot of work to do. Um, and I'm hoping that, you know, the I current feel, Nigerian feel government feel is serious well, enough. I feel for he's, a, he's a good man. He's a very good man. Yeah, well. But he's operating within a system that God will help him. He will do well. He will do well. Hey, amen. All right. Mr. Barry, thank you very much for spending your Christmas morning with us. Uh, we, of course, uh, always enjoy speaking with you. Uh, have a very interesting day ahead. Thank you so much. Absolutely. All right. Um, yes, uh, these conversations continue this morning. Uh, let's now move to talk about the Central Bank Governor. Absolutely. Godwin Emefiele, the former governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, has been released from the Kuje Correctional Center in Abuja after meeting his bail conditions. Adamu Duza, spokesperson for the center, confirmed that Emefiele was released on Friday, the 22nd of December. The federal government has been prosecuting Emefiele for alleged procurement fraud and also linked to a fraud case involving the Ways and Means, a loan facility through which the CBN finances the government's budget shortfalls. Jim Obaze, a special investigator prob probing the CBN and related entities, disclosed this in a final panel report, which he submitted to President Bola Tinubu last week. Meanwhile, the embattled former governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria has uh, denied a report by the Central Bank of Nigeria's private investigator, Jim Obaze, on Sunday, Mefele called the report misleading and a planned attempt to belittle his person, injure his character and serve the self selfish interests of the private investigator. In a response made available to Punch newspaper, Mefele said that, um, moreover, the former President Mohamed Bari has stated in sev on several occasions that he authorized the approval of the Naira redesign. Um, he goes on to say that, I am in court, I am therefore at a loss to, as to why Mr. Jim Obaze who mislead Nigerians that there was no presidential approval. And he does have a point. Because um, like we always see, and you know, like we always have um, uh, witnessed here in Nigeria, that every single time that the government leaves office, I've said it you know, just a few minutes ago, that they pick one person as the scapegoat and the face of corruption for that government and ignore everybody else. We hear of billions and billions and billions and trillions of naira that somehow cannot be accounted for. We are talking about issues that, okay, let's even say that the money is not missing. But, you know, there's definitely processes that these funds pass through that, um, you know, were criminal, at least. That, you know, some level of 
um, high-handedness, you know, that the government expressed something. We, we see these things happen, but what we do is that we pick one person and make that person the scapegoat to the face of corruption for that government, and every other person takes a walk. And then we claim that we're fighting corruption or we're trying to, you know, improve on our transparency um, 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 index. Or was it, was it corruption transparency, corruption, to improve exactly. our ratings on the corruption exactly. transparency index. Um, we did it with, you know, um, 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 Desiani, of course, with the good luck, uh, Jonathan administration, and every other person in the administration that supposedly or allegedly had a, a case to answer with regards to corruption, everybody else gets to walk. Then one person is, stay, is you know, named um, you know, the corruption face of that government. Go to the MFL is currently going through that. And again, I said it last week that I'm not saying that he is innocent, um, but I believe that there are better ways that these things could be fought. And there's no way, there's no way that Jim Obaze or any other person can convince us that Gordon Mefele acted on his own without the approval of President Mohamed Bouhari. I agree. With the Naira redesign or any other thing that he did. President Mohamed Bouhari's post is still there. In fact, if you can go to the Nigerian president's uh, Twitter page, you can still see the post where the government, where uh, Mohamed Bouhari, Took pictures with Godem Mefele holding the Naira redesign, uh, Naira, the new Naira notes when they presented to him and all of that. So he was definitely aware of every single detail of the Naira redesign. There's no way that, you know, Nigerians will be convinced otherwise. But what they're trying to do, like I said, is exclude the main person, the president himself, like they did with Gulag Jonathan. They're doing it this, the same thing now. Exclude the president himself from every way that he may have failed um, to be president may have failed to checkmate these things, you know, and ensure that you know that the, the Nigeria, uh, the fight against corruption, you know, he's not guilty. Right. They so, exclude him from the conversation, blame one person, and then just focus their attention well, on that one person. I mean, maybe the defense to that would be that, of course, there is the immunity clause that provides and protects. He's know, no those... longer president. Yes. Yeah, so that's what I wanted to mention. Uh, there's immunity clause that provide, protects them whilst in office, but what happens when they're not in office? And we've seen people. Who, were not, who are no longer in office being brought before a court of competent, competent jurisdiction to answer to crimes that were committed whilst they were in office. Case in point would be Jacob Zuma in South Africa, right? We've seen that. I mean, but even though you can't guarantee the outcome of what the result would be, at least let yeah. it be seen that there is some investigation. Let them be seen to be making an attempt to do an investigation, you know, in this regard, to see who, who are the other people that were parties to the crime. But the, I doubt that that would ever happen. Yeah, and just for a moment, I just want to mention that the... Immunity clause doesn't stop the National Assembly from saying that this person, we need to, you know... You need to come and ask questions. I, I answer certain no, we questions. don't do such here.